Hello, Artful Manifestors. Thank you for joining me for today's channeled message. Before we get into it, I want to let you know that I'm giving away a free personalized tarot reading. All you have to do to qualify is give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and type Be The Light in the comment section below. I'll be announcing the winner on September 2nd, 2024. And today's winner is Jean Marie 53124. Congratulations, Jean Marie Stone. All right, for today's reading, you can choose from each one of these cards and or one of the stars crystals. So for pile number one, we have a cute little sodalite star. And for the second reading, we have a crazy lace agate star. And for the third reading, we have rhodonite. Let your intuition be your guide. Whichever crystal and or image you're most drawn to is probably the reading meant for you. Of course, you're always welcome to listen to two or even all three of the messages as there may be additional messages for you there. You'll find a link to the readings in the description box below. Hello, reading number one. You chose this cute little sodalite star and sodalite helps to bring you clarity, improves your intuition, helps with self-acceptance. <laughs> and you chose new beginnings. Card number 44. Let this magic in my spell clear the space in which I dwell. And if you are a blue butterfly person, please put one in the comments below. This is card number 44. And that reduces to an eight. Um, funny that the dog barked when it's when I mentioned a blue butterfly person. So this may be, um, perhaps you have a, an ancestor or passed on loved one who shows themselves to you, their presence through butterflies. And eights are numbers of abundance and cycles. So perhaps you are getting free of a cycle or completing a cycle and beginning a new one. Let's see, let's get some more information. Let's see what other messages you're meant to hear at this time. All right, if you are curious about the cards that I use, I do list them in the description box below. And if I have a link where you can find them, I include that as well. All right, we have basil, prosperity, luck, and love. Yes, so you are entering a new cycle, the beginning of a new phase that is prosperous, lucky, and for some of you, it's love. This can be self-love, self-acceptance, like the sodalite, or it could be relationships, feeling loved, whether that's in an intimate relationship or just relationships in general. All right, let's get a card from this deck. What does the spirit want the first reading want to know today? Wise one, grow within your current situation. All right, I feel that you are growing within your current situation and you are gaining the wisdom that you're meant to and now carrying that on to this new phase, this new cycle. All right, let's get a card from this deck. What does Spirit want the first reading to know today? All right, walking away. Yeah, there's something that you're walking away from. I feel a pattern that's been repeated in your life that you've now, again, you've gained the wisdom that you were meant to. You've learned the lesson that you were meant to learn and you're walking away with that wisdom, with that resilience, that strength, that knowledge, that experience, and you're using that in this next phase. Let's get some tarot cards and see what other messages Spirit has for you today. 
All right, the Six of Cups. The Six of Cups is memories, nostalgia. We see here a parent and a child, and the parent is giving the child a gift, a plant, something that they can grow from. So no matter what your past was like, there are lessons to be learned from them. And the gift may be the lesson from the past. Let's get some more cards. We have the hanged man, which is changing your perspective. Getting a new perspective on something. Oh, we got two. We have the high priestess. This is your intuition, your inner wisdom, your connection to spirit. So whatever this past experience is, it, and it may not be apparent, although, you know, it may be, that's what's depicted in this card. It could just be any past experience that you've been working on, uh, completing that lesson, that challenge, that because of it, you now have this stronger intuition, the stronger inner wisdom. You're able to hear your inner voice much clearer now. And the tower. I love this depiction of the tower because this person seems to have caused the fall of this structure. So tower moments help to shake the foundation of certain beliefs, certain patterns, and begin something new. So I feel that this is like an aha moment. It's something that you experienced in the past that perhaps at the time may have felt painful, and that cycle may have been repeated in your life more than once, but you're now, you know, you have the strength to walk away and you're the one that's that's making the choice to do that. I feel you caused this tower moment, this um, revelation, this understanding. You're the one that's choosing to break down these old beliefs. And the Three of Pentacles. The Three of Pentacles is collaboration, working together, uh, refining your skills. I see that you are, I feel for many of you, this energy that you're walking away from could be some type of relationships situations that no longer serve you and you're finding uh, a tribe that of like-minded people you're finding energies that resonate with you more and you're collaborating with these energies now these energies could be people places situations they could be elements from source earth gaia And justice. You are bringing balance into your life as a result of this. This is what's fair. I feel that what you are walking away from the cycle is something that didn't feel fair to you. You're having a shift in understanding in the situation and you're creating balance within yourself and within these new relationships. And the Nine of Swords. So the Nine of Swords is stress, anxiety, things that could cause us to have trouble sleeping. In some cases, even, you know, unpleasant dreams. So the situation that didn't feel fair was causing you anxiety, 
but I see that clearing away. I see you walking away from this. You're, remember, you're entering a phase of prosperity and luck, new beginnings. There we go. The Seven of Pentacles. So what I'm hearing is that you're becoming much more grounded, much more resourceful, much more independent. We see someone here literally growing their own resources. So you could be, in fact, gardening, doing things of that, spending more time in nature, but you're also taking practical steps towards your goal, towards your goals, and you're now seeing the fruit of your labors. So all of this work is leading you to this harvest, but it's going to feel much easier than it has in the past because we have here luck. It's going to feel like good luck, like your luck has changed. Things have shifted. As you shift this perspective, you're recognizing something from the past that was painful as a gift, a gift that gave you this insight to be able to um, discern energies and recognize, you know, what's not good for you, what's not serving you. And you're really now focusing on growing your own resources, becoming independent. All right. I want to share with you what the guidebook says about this card. All right, if you were chosen by this spell card, a new beginning would indeed be best for you at this time. The question is how to create this in the very best way. Cast this spell and allow the magic that flows forth to guide you to a place and path where you are not repeating and recycling, but where there is a true sense of newness, discovery, and wonder. You are now creating a beautiful, brave moment of opportunity. Live as if you are on the verge of a most wonderful discovery. All right, so here is the spell. It is best to gather these items yourself from natural places, but if you cannot do that, purchasing some would be fine. A feather, a seashell, a piece of wood, and a stone. You will also need a white cloth, a white candle, a broom, some crystals, flowers, and herbs, any you, any you wish to use some thin wire, bergamot oil, a soft cloth, and a handful of salt. Go to your sacred space and completely clear all that is there and put it away, perhaps in a box which can be stored beneath your altar. Strip it right down, then see a circle of pure white light moving all about you, protecting you and filling the space with light. Place nine drops of bergamot oil on the cloth, Wipe down the altar surface and really clear it. Then go about your home and cleanse all the doorknob handles and light switches with the same cloth. Return to your space and begin to recreate it. Place the white cloth and then your seashell feather stone and wood upon your altar. Light the candle and while it is burning, take the broom and decorate it with the herbs and flowers. You may wish to intertwine little branches from trees like a eucalyptus with the broom. Pa place, paste your crystals on the handle and then place it near your altar, letting everything dry and set firmly. Chant three times. Let this broom sweep anew all that is no longer true. Let this magic in my spell clear the space in which I dwell. Let the water, fire, air, and earth bring to me energetic rebirth. New beginnings with them I shall see, more of life's great discoveries. And by the power of three by three, as I do will, so mote it be. Scatter the salt around your home, especially at the exits and entrances. And then energetically sweep your home. Open the windows and the doors and sweep the energy out along with the salt. Clear up any sparkling, any remnants with the vacuum cleaner. The energy will feel clean, clear, sparkling, and fresh. 
Close your circle of white light, knowing that there are fresh, new, amazing beginnings for you. Blessed be, bright soul. I love that. And know that you can always modify spells. They don't have to be exact as you find them in books or on the internet. And in fact, by tailoring it to what you have around you, um, including the things that you find around your home, uh, using things that are special to you, this imbues it more with your energy and makes the spell more powerful for you. I hope that you find that helpful and I'm wishing you the best on this exciting new cycle that you're beginning with prosperity, luck, and love. And of course, you're always welcome to reach out to me via my website linked below for any additional guidance you may feel you need. And I am wishing you the best. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye. Hello, reading number two. Welcome. You chose the Crazy Lace Agate Star, which is also called the Happy Stone, the Laughing Stone. It helps to bring about joy. It's a protective stone. It's great for emotional healing. And you also chose Good Cheer. With kind heart and humor free, may good cheer rule, so mote it be. All right, and I do want to read to you what the guidebook says about this card. Good cheer and laughter, revelry and lighthearted sharing. This is what you may need more of at this time, sweet soul. Good cheer is such an understated spiritual quality, but even the dignified angels and the old gods laugh, as do the wondrous fairy folk. Good cheer, healing, healthy, wondrous good cheer is never malicious and there is so much to be delighted with in this world that it's a shame to be caught up in a web of gloom. If this spell has chosen you, the universe is offering you an opportunity to be more lighthearted, to laugh more, to feel uplifted, and to and open to finding the good in all circumstances. Cast this spell and be reconnected with the sunshine of true laughter and good cheer and feel your spirits take flight. There are lessons in great beauty and sadness and that which deserves serious contemplation. But a magical life must also make room for the power of laughter and delight. Allow the magical good cheer to enter your world and fill your spirit slowly, surely shed its sight, sadness. All right. So let's see how that plays into the rest of your reading. I do list all the cards that I use in the description box below. And if I have a link where you can find them, I'll include that as well. And at the end of this reading, I will share with you the spell that goes with this card. All right, let's find out what spirit wants you to know right now. Reading number two. Okay, I think that may be too many. So let's pick all of these up and keep going. All right, here we go. Cauldron, creation, opportunity, and caring. And already that looks so fun. You see apples and oranges and all kinds of magic in there. All right, let's get a card from this deck. What does Spirit want reading number two to know at this time? Okay, this came out in the first reading. So if you were drawn to that reading, you may want to listen to it. Wise one, grow within your current situation. I do feel that the message for this card in this reading is a little bit different. What the guides are telling me is that when you can laugh at something, when you can laugh at yourself, then you know it's healed. So laughter is the best medicine. Um, it helps to heal us, but also it's an indicator of when we have healed something. Uh, there are some things that we may feel offended by easily or get hurt. It, it kind of rubs a scar. It 
triggers something, it activates our emotions um, with a negative response or an unpleasant response. And in those cases, we know that uh, that particular area still needs some healing. But when we can laugh at things, then we know that it's been healed. All right, let's get a card from this deck. What else is spirit like? Reading number two to now. Actually felt this card. Magician and the Mirror. All right, something about reflecting and what you, the energy you give is the energy that you receive. We see an infinity symbol above his head, and this is card number 53, which reduces to an eight. So that is cycles. So it's this cycle of energy. We see a different color in each hand. It's like one hand is receiving and one hand is giving. So it's like it comes in, the energy comes in, and then it goes out. But then it's just kind of recycled. And um, we see here that it's two different colors. So there's an idea of transmutation. transmutation um, transmuting the energy so changing it changing changing your energy something maybe that that needs to be healed and changing that into something else all right let's get some tarot cards and see if we can get some more information what does spirit want reading number two to know look at that cauldron again we have another cauldron Five of Wands. So Five of Wands can means it's time to cooperate, to you know stop competing, co competing with yourself, competing with others, competing with the energies around you, and to cooperate. I mean, we see at this point that there is. It looks like her dress is going to catch on fire. They're so busy. Um, you know, with the conflict up here that they don't even notice that they're catching the place on fire. So it's time to, you know, work together to put this fire out and create a safe fire. Interesting. All right, the Hierophant, another five. So you have the five of wands and then you have the Hierophant, which is also five. So there's definitely a change coming. And the Hierophant is a very spiritual person. We see these two uh, like acolytes, right? learning from this spiritual person. And we have the wise one here. Strength. Finding your strength. What is your skill set? What is your strength? The chariot, overcoming obstacles, um, being in the driver's seat, forging your own path, success. So with the hair fonts, the strength and chariot, which are all major arcana, by the way, what I see is that the forces you are cooperating with are ones that you seek. You seeking energies, uh, people that are like minded, that support your beliefs. And this is going to help you shift. 
I find I'm finding that you are this strong person. If you look at this card, you see these two are fighting with each other. These two are fighting with each other. This person is becoming aware, like, hey, the, all, there's all this bickering going on, and we're we've lost sight of the goal. And I feel that you're that aware person, that self-aware person. That's your strength. You're the one that's able to um, transmute this energy. That's how you're overcoming this situation. Creation, opportunity, and caring. It's you care about that goal and you care about others. The Seven of Swords. The Three of Swords. All right, so perhaps in the past it felt like um, someone took something from you or somebody tricked you, but I see now that you are empowering yourself. Remember, you are strong, you overcome obstacles, you stand out from the crowd. You do what's right and true, even if other people don't. And the Ten of Pentacles. And remember, we talked about there being a cycle you completing and we end with the Ten of Pentacles, which is the completion. You have two sevens and two fives and two eights. So fives are about change, and I feel that the change is a change that you are the catalyst of. You inspire this change. I'm hearing a change of heart. And sevens are spiritual, but they're also lucky. And what I feel is that you are letting your spirit guide you. You are letting your values, your morals guide you. And so even if somebody has done something in the past that didn't seem right, it seemed tricky, deceitful, um, anything like that, that you end the karmic cycle by not repeating it to them or someone else. You rise above that. And your reward is the Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles is a, a happy life, a happy home, a happy career. We see all this bounty. There's a grapevine with fruit, uh, everybody's dressed in fine clothes, a beautiful home. Very nice. Let's look at what the spell says. And I just realized that this is also a seven. 25 reduces to seven. So that's three sevens. Seven, seven, seven. I told you it is lucky. It's like your luck is changing. So this may may not even be a person. It may just be life situations, things that have happened that felt unfair. Like, oh, why does this keep happening? Like something breaks, then something else breaks. Um, but I see that through your faith, through your strength, through your resilience, you're so powerful that you're transmuting this energy. Your luck is changing. You're creating your own opportunities to create this abundant, wealthy, prosperous life. All right, let's see what the spell says. You will need a candle, a lime, some fresh, pure water, a pinch of salt, and a lovely glass to drink from. Go to your sacred space early in the morning, just after rising, and light your candle. 
see a circle of green all about you, encircling you, spinning you, healing, joyful, full of life and vitality. Cut the lime, squeeze the juice into the glass, then fill it with fresh, pure water and a pinch of salt. Chant three times. Joyous laughter now rings out, no matter what darkness is about. With kind heart and humor free, may good cheer rule, so mote it be. Take a few moments to truly fill your heart, opening up to good cheer. Blow out your candle and see your circle of green light shimmer. Then dissolve, transmuting and being reabsorbed back into the energy of the universe. Enhance this spell by burning oils of grapefruit, lime and orange, sweet with a few drops of sandalwood or frank frankincense. These oils bring about a sense of wonderful good cheer and uplifting yet grounded and kind vibration throughout your home and your own energy field. Love that. What a simple and beautiful spell. And I hope that that helps. Um, please let me know how this resonates. I love hearing the connections that you make between the readings and your own life. Of course, you're always welcome to reach out to me via my website for additional guidance. I am wishing you the best. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye. Hello, reading number three. Welcome. You chose this cute little rhodonite star. And rhodonite is a very healing stone. It helps to heal past wounds, spiritual wounds. It also helps to reduce anxiety and encourages healthy relationships. You also chose this card, energy. A light inside my fire, energy fill me, make me shine. All right, I wanna to read to you what the guidebook says about this card. All right, there are times when our inner core seems like it has melted down. We have no jeu de vivre, get up and go, vitality, or as the ancient Celts called it, fire, akin to prana or chi, chi. We feel flat and exhausted and tired. This low period can heal deeper maladies and it is important not to make an enemy of this feeling. Instead, give yourself some time to rest. Three days, three nights, then it is time to cast this magical spell to restore the vitality you have been distanced from. If you have been chosen by this spell, see it as a helping hand from the universe, the natural world and the elementals. They are showing you that in order to live well, you must reconnect with the source of energy for all of humanity. That is nature and the planet herself. All right, we're gonna see how these two energies fold into the rest of your message. And I do list all the cards that I use in the description box below. And if I have a link where you can find them, I'll include that as well. What message is reading number three meant to hear? All right. Basil, prosperity, luck, and love. This came out in, I believe, the second pile. All right, let's take a card from this deck. And I, I only say that to you in case you were drawn to that pile. If uh, a card shows up in more than one pile, then that may mean that there may be a message for you in that other reading as well. All right. Wow, this has shown up in every single reading today. And, you know, what I know I've mentioned this before, I put the card back in the middle of the deck. I knock on it three times. I cut it in half. I uh, shuffle it off camera and then I shuffle it on camera. So spirit really wants this card um, to be seen and because this is the third time it's shown up i'm going to go ahead and read to you what it says in the guidebook about this particular card all right let's see knuckle down 
be reliable and committed. Be open to wisdom and insights from your elders. The wise one represents the wisest aspect of the goddess, the crone. In paganism and modern Wicca, the crone is the fiercest, most psychic, and most aware aspect of the goddess because she has been through many of life's challenges and overcome many setbacks. On this card, the raven in her hands represents the capacity to overcome the darker times and to be reborn again and again. So she helps you to tap into wisdom to overcome whatever life throws at you. Wisdom being the information stored in your soul rather than the knowledge acquired in this lifetime and to learn from the experience of your elders. And what I'm hearing is that for you, reading number three, if you have been experiencing low energy, that it's because you are receiving downloads from spirit and it's taking you energy to anchor it into the 3D. And also there may have been recent experiences or even experiences from the past that you have been processing recently that, again, it's taking some of your energy. So it's it's using a lot of energy even if you're not consciously aware that it's happening. So your spirit guides want you to know that. All right, let's get a card from this deck. Let's see what other information. Wow, that just leapt out. Action. All right. So you're meant to download something, receive something, process something before you take action. And now it may be time for you to take that action. Let's get some tarot cards and see if we can get some more clues about this reading number three. How interesting. And you may have been drawn to the other two piles if you're if you were to go read those, because like I said, this showed up in all three piles today. All right, Seven of Wands. We see here in this card somebody that's really having to stand their ground against these other forces. But they have a vantage point. So again, I see that there's all this energy coming at you that you've been processing. And so you may, maybe some of you aren't um, experiencing any kind of fatigue and that's okay. Uh, that just means that you're doing it at night when you sleep, but you are receiving some information and processing it, anchoring it. Uh, but yes, I see all of these different things coming at you from different angles. The lovers. The lovers is a card of harmony and choice. And they're really showing me this little heart here that the cat's tails are making. I hadn't noticed that before. And remember, rhodonite helps with emotional healing. I feel like it also helps with self-love. And we did see love here. So I feel like what spirit wants you to focus on is self-care and not to be hard on yourself judge yourself if you do feel tired there's a reason for it there's something happening that you're meant to do and to show yourself some grace be kind to yourself allow yourself to take some downtime if you need it also, at the end of this reading, I'm going to share with you the spell for this energy card. Temperance, balance, you know, and I did notice that she was standing on one foot in this card. So there's something about balance. It could be that you've recently had to focus uh, your energy in one area or a few areas of your life which didn't allow you for allow you to focus energy evenly in all aspects of your life i love this this particular depiction of the temperance card because 
we see everything here um, illustrated. We see the laptop for work. We see healthy food for healthy diet. We see this journal for self-care, a glass of water, again, for physical health. But then we also see some cupcakes and a martini, you know, so play and relaxing, letting your hair down. And then we see her literally standing in the, it's called the tree pose if you're a yoga person. Um, so being grounded, taking time to care for yourself, we can't continue to fight these battles is what I'm hearing or take on more if we're not taking care of ourselves. So that idea of putting the oxygen mask on yourself, making sure that your cup is full because only then can you help others or think in a, in a healthy, help, helpful way when addressing different situations in your life. So making sure that you have that work-life balance and that balance in all areas, making sure that you have time to have fun, taking care of your body physically with exercise, with healthy food, with plenty of rest, and processing, taking time to process, which is what that journal is. All right, let's get some more cards. Two of Cups. Okay, interesting that you have the lovers and the Two of Cups. So for some of you, this could be relationships, different relationships, work relationships, relationships with family, partners, friends, community, and again, you have the choice to take time for yourself, love yourself, put that oxygen mask on yourself and make sure that you are recharging your batteries. Nine of swords. Yeah. So this is not getting enough sleep, being stressed out by all of these things that you're having to deal with. Wow, I'm really sorry, reading number three, that you've been having to deal with so many things. It kind of happens, it's like an ebb and flow. They're showing me a crescendo of energy, like in the ocean, or sometimes the waves get really intense, and it seems like all these energies seem to converge at one time in one place. And I feel like that's where you've been lately. And I'm so sorry that you've been going through that. The full. All right. This is the a new beginning. So what I feel for you is that there is um, something new coming in. A new energy that's going to kind of set you free from the seven of wands energy, the nine of swords energy. This is taking a leap of faith. And I love this depiction because if she jumps off this cliff, she has a magic broom to ride. She's not going to fall. So you have some, some resource, some knowledge, some experience that's going to carry you into this new phase. The zero is the first the Fool is the first card of the Major Arcana. So this is the beginning of some new phase in your life. Definitely. And the Four of Cups. All right, so here we see somebody who's already had enough. So they don't need this. For some of you... Instead of feeling um, stressed, you may feel like apathetic or bored with a situation. So it's time for you to find your passion and do something new. We see he's not even acknowledging this person. It's like he's already had enough. And we know there's something to drink out there and he's got a whole ocean right outside his door.
There's something about your dream, something that you've been dreaming about, wanting. I see you taking steps towards that now, towards this dream that you've had. Abandoning your the things that are causing you stress. Cutting those things off. Um, clearing away the energy of what's causing you stress and pursuing a dream that you have. The Knight of Cups, yes. The Knight of Cups is an offering. And we see out of this cup, all these hearts. Definitely pursuing something that you love. So here we see somebody on their broom about to take that leap of faith. And then here we see somebody riding their broom. So yeah, I see that the way for you to feel less anxious, less stressed, is to pursue this dream that you have. Wow. All right, let's, let's read the guidebook about the spell for this card energy all right it says you will need the juice of several oranges freshly grated ginger some fresh mint a goblet or glass and a candle go to your sacred space and see a beautiful circle of bright orange swirling all about you glowing and strong vibrant and so alive Really begin to feel this energy entering into you, awakening your vital energies from within and raising them up. Light your candle and begin to stare into the flame. After you have connected with this source light, chant three times. Prana, okra, new fire, chi. I am now glowing with energy. Source, bring to me this power. Allow your blessings on me to shower. A light inside my fire divine, energy fill me, make me shine. And by the power of three by three, as I do will, so mote it be. Pour your orange juice into your goblet, pop in your ginger and your mint, hold the goblet up to the candle and slowly drink down the contents, pouring it into your solar plexus, energizing it and brightening its energy fueling your source of power right from the inside. With every sip, feel the orange glow within you growing. When you have done this, blow out your candle, sending out your spell's energy. Then see the circle of orange shimmer and glow until it begins to break apart and be reabsorbed into the universe. As often as possible over the coming days, Stand in sunshine and light and see your solar plexus brightening with the light. Wear orange, gold, and sunshine tones as much as possible. Even a gold-toned scarf could make all the difference. Feel your energy rise and rise, shining one. All right, and I just want to tell you what I was pronouncing. New fire is new we fire. Nui Frey. It's the Gaelic word for energy. Nui Frey. All right. I love that. All right. If this message resonates, please let me know. I love to hear the connections that you make between your life, what's going on in your life, and what the cards show us. You're always welcome to reach out to me via my website and get additional guidance. But I am wishing you the best to find your energy and your passion following your heart. I see that. The other thing is the Knight of Cups is full of energies. Knights are full of energy. So I see that whatever this is, there's energies that are draining you. And when you start to follow your heart, follow your dream, you're going to be energized and light enough that you can fly. <laughs> the light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye.